Hello, church family. Prophet John Harkey here. So glad that you were able to watch this. I miss you and love you. And I know this is pre-recorded, and, and we've done this on purpose. Because a, a question was popped to me. You know, obviously, our, our core values, our vision of the church, were prophetic, were relational, or spiritual. In this first video, I want to talk what Prophetic is in a very practical manner. What is it in our everyday life? What is it in our church life? And why is it important? Well, let me, let me give you some context. Uh, because obviously the gift of prophecy. In the practical sense, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. So, first of all, obviously, my expectation and my desire for every person, a part of the Citadel Church, where you're a tender, a new believer, wherever you are, where you're a seasoned leader, that you desire spiritual gifts. That's because Paul said earnestly desire. It's not a suggestion. There's a, especially that you may prophesy. What does that mean? Prophesying, it means you're speaking the mind and the heart of God, right? Practicality, I don't want just the minister that is preaching the, ser preaching the sermon that particular night or that particular morning or that guest to be the only one in the church prophesying. I want the greeter to be prophesying. And well, what does that look like? Obviously, you've seen when, and I don't want you to limit prophecy to uh, the, the, the minister calling somebody out and telling them about their past, present, and future, or giving them a word of encouragement, a word of comfort, a word of strength. And that is prophecy. But I want that happening in the foyer. I want that happening in the children's church. I want our children to be speaking the heart of God, which is imperative that we learn to hear the voice of God. So at the Citadel Church, this has got to be something that permeates the entire congregation from me down because of the power to transform people by giving them a word of prophecy. And as I, you know, just in this brief moment that I'm going to have with you, I want me to give you a powerful testimony. 1996, which was several years ago, some of you may not even have been born that way, that, that time, excuse me, that I went to a church in the islands of Hawaii, small, small church, much, it was even smaller than ours, 30 people. And I lined up everybody after I, I gave a sermon I lined up the whole church and gave them and went down the line and gave them a prophetic word you know I, I spoke a word of encouragement a word of comfort a word of strengthening each one well I walked up to a young boy who I later found out his name was Jonathan and I laid my hands this boy was six years old and out of my mouth, I said, Jonathan, and now his mother and his sister was a young teen, and his mother was there. I said, Jonathan, even though your father has deserted you in the natural, your heavenly father has not deserted you. That's what I, I said that out of my mouth which is risky because what if his father is in the, in the building? What if his father is standing next to the woman, the mother? What if the father is an usher? What if the father is sitting in the congregation? That's a risk. And I hear it at the Citadel Church. I don't want us to be afraid to take prophetic risks, but I want to be done with maturity and humbleness 
And if you do miss it, you need to confess up to it. Really, I missed it. But I don't want you to be just popping off either. I want you to speak the heart of God. Nor do I want people to be focused on you or me or any one of our leadership that we're somehow this specially anointed. I, I don't want to take that we're, we're, we're elevated above every, everybody else because we prophesy. No, it's a gift to equip the body. Now, just because you prophesy doesn't mean you have the office of the prophet. That's another discussion. But when I said that at that meeting in 1996, excuse me, you could have heard a pin drop. People were weeping all over the congregation. Jonathan's sister was weeping. Jonathan's mother was weeping. And that little boy grabbed a hold of me. And I still, I mean, I was sort of the end. I had maybe four or five people. And he grabbed a hold of my shirt and would not let go. I finished the meeting. Pastor comes to me. And he's weeping, and he tells me, you don't know, Brother Harkey, what just transpired. And I didn't know. Proceeded to tell me Jonathan's story. To make it quickly, because there's a lot into this. Jonathan, his mother, and his sister had gone to the market store, the grocery store, to buy groceries on a Saturday. This was during college football. His dad was a very uh, avid fan of college football. A working man, he was single, breadwinner in the home. The, the wife was a housewife working her tail off raising kids. Had gone to the market, took the two kids to the market, and the six-year-old boy, they're going through the aisles to buy food and stuff and groceries for the family. Jonathan asked for a toy and mom buys it for him and they go back to the house and Jonathan runs in to show his daddy his new toy while the TV's on he can hear it and look, dad's not there he's calling dad dad where are you runs into the, the the master bedroom where mom and dad sleep and dad dad's not in there and then runs into the master ba bathroom and when John Jonathan the little boy is six years old runs into the master bath. His father was in the shower. He had hung himself and committed suicide. A little boy at six years old doesn't know how to articulate suicide. But a little boy knows how to feel when he's deserted. Now I want to fast forward. Ten years later, I'm in Maui, Hawaii, where this happened. I'm at our home church. I had stepped off the platform. I had just preached that I had done the last morning session during the, the prophetic conference. That was 2006. I stepped off the platform. I walked toward my seat and the pastor had, had dismissed everybody for lunch. A tall young man came up to me along with a woman and a beautiful young girl came up to me. And, and this tall, young, handsome young man said, my name is Jonathan. I'm the one you prophesied. And he hugged me. And he... Uh, when I looked at him, smile on his face, no scars from the trauma, no anger, no bitterness, no resentment. But a man, a young man that was knows where he was going because of one prophetic word. 
Citadel Church, there are hundreds and thousands of Jonathans in Tucson. To not to prophesy selfish. God bless you.